Good morning and happy Easter. We're so excited that you've chosen to join us for worship online this morning at South Hills Baptist Church. It's going to be an incredible Resurrection Sunday as we worship Jesus Christ and what he's done for us. We want to encourage you this morning to take a picture of you, take a picture of your family worshiping with us via the live stream today. Whether you're in your pajamas or whether you're in your Sunday best, please take a picture and then we encourage you to post it onto social media, onto Facebook, onto Twitter, onto Instagram. And if you will, post it with the hashtag SHBC Easter. Hashtag SHBC Easter. Easter. That way we can search that hashtag later on, get a collection of all the pictures of the people who are worshiping with us online and celebrate with you. We're so glad that you're with us today and we're so glad uh, that we have a chance to use the technology uh, and, and the videos and the live feed uh, to communicate with our church, to worship with our church, even in a different setting, in a different way, not only on Sunday, but throughout the week. So be paying attention. Make sure you've liked this page and make sure that you're following along to know everything that's happening in the life of our church. It's going to be a great Sunday morning of worship together. We're so glad to have you with us today. I want to encourage you. I know that it's easy for us to get discouraged or disappointed that we're not meeting together in person. And trust me, I miss it and it hurts me as much or more as it hurts anybody else each and every week. But God's up to something. God's going to do something great. And don't believe, don't think that just because we're not gathered together in person this Easter, that it's going to be less meaningful, that it's going to be less significant, that it's going to be less impactful. Because God is taking the gospel message and he's sending it out through all these live streams, through all these broadcasts, through all these worship services that are online. And we have no idea how many people might watch a portion or all of this service or scroll through and see church after church after church on their news feed. And something may trigger in their heart. God may speak to them in a powerful, meaningful way. Who knows? They might just coincidentally click on one of these services watch a couple of minutes and hear us singing the gospel or hear the pastor preaching the gospel. And so this morning, I want to pray for us and I want to ask God to bless you. I want to ask God to bless our worship service together as we experience him in a fresh new way. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the privilege of worshiping you, for being in your presence. And Lord, though we're scattered in homes and we're scattered all throughout the city and even beyond, that God, we're united in faith, we're united in Christ, and we thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins, to conquer death, and to rise from the grave, and that today we can celebrate the empty tomb, that Jesus changes everything through the resurrection. God, we're so grateful for our church. We're so grateful for all those who are watching and joining us today. Lord, bless us and help us to do our best to honor you and glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, be sure and comment, be sure and like, be sure and share this page with others. Even as this worship service is beginning and going on, feel free to dialogue with one another, interact with one another, comment on the songs, comment on the worship service. Let's worship together today and have an awesome, incredible Easter. buried beneath my shame who could carry that kind of weight it was my tomb till I met you I was breathing but not alive I tried to hide it was my tomb till I met you you called my name and I ran out of that grave out of the darkness into your glorious day
sea has saved my soul. Now your freedom is all that I know. The old may knew, Jesus, when I met you. Out of the darkness into your glorious day, you call my name, and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day. I needed rescue, my sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan, now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing, now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open. Cause when you call my name, I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness, into your glorious day. You call my name, and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness, into your glorious day. There's a reason I can see. There's a reason for this life inside me. One name above all names, Jesus. Yes, it's Jesus. There's a reason for this hope. There's a reason for this peace that I know. Worthy of all praise, Jesus. Yes, it's Jesus. I will lift my hands up, I will raise my voice high, I will shout out your love till the day that I die. Everything that I have. All my worship I bring, you're the reason I live, you're the reason I sing, you're the reason I live, you're the reason I sing. For the victory over sin. For the goodness of your grace each day, I will bow and bless your name, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I will lift my hands up. I will raise my voice high. I will shout out your love till the day that I die. Everything that I have, all my worship I bring. You're the reason I live. You're the reason I sing. You're the reason I live. You're the reason I sing.
when my time on earth is through when my final breath has left these lungs i'll forever be with you where the song goes on and on i will lift my hands up i will raise my voice high i will shout out your love till the day that i die everything that i have all my worship i bring you're the reason i live you're the reason i sing i will lift my hands up i will raise my voice high i will shout out your love till the day that i die everything that i have all my worship i bring you're the reason i live you're the reason i sing you're the reason i live you're the reason i sing Good morning, church. Happy Easter. What a beautiful, beautiful day it is. In the midst of circumstances and things that are going on in our lives on a daily basis, how amazing it is to still know that Jesus loves us and he is risen. We have reason to celebrate today. And I just want to thank everybody for continuing to adapt and join us on the Zoom calls uh, for Sunday School for Small Groups and joining us for live worship. This is absolutely amazing, and I, am, I, I could not be more proud to be a part of this South Hills family. And as your stewardship chairman, I just want to say an encouraging word to everybody that you guys have been so faithful through these times, and I am blown away as we continue to look at uh, the giving that goes on by our church family. It is obvious and evident that you have not lost your focus and this whole church family knows uh, what our responsibility are, responsibilities are. This whole church family continues to give faithfully. It's just amazing that through a time like what we're going through, we could be ahead financially of where we were last year. And I am so proud of every single uh, person that's in this church family. I just want to remind everybody that if you've not used uh, the Tithe app, to go online and, and download that app and use it, and to check out some of the features uh, that come along with it. There's automated giving that you can set up so you don't have to worry about weekly or monthly trying to remember to do it. Um, it's different not being here and, and having the reminder of being in worship every Sunday morning. So there are things that you can do online, like set it up automatically so it just pulls it out of your check. Um, my family has been, been doing that for a while, and it, it's been a real blessing for us. Again, I just want to say I love you, church family. Continue to pray for each other. Continue to pray for our pastor uh, and the staff as they continue to, to try to figure out what this looks like in these times and what the future has in store for South Hills. We will not lose our focus on, on what our mission is and what our vision is. We are here to serve Jesus Christ. We are here to share his word. We are here to share his gospel and not being able to be together in public won't stop that. And that's evident by everything that each and every one of y'all do on a daily basis as we continue to adapt and change through this environment. Would you guys pray with me? Father God, we just thank you so much for your love, for your grace. God, we thank you for your son. Lord, we thank you that he bared the burden for us and died on the cross but it's Sunday, and he is risen. And no matter what trials life may throw at us, no matter what it, circumstances that we have to go through, the victory is already won. The battle is won, and we can have hope in that. Oh, God, I pray that you would just continue to strengthen us during this time, that you would give us peace, that we would continue to love each other. Father God, I just I thank you so much for your love, and I thank you for this church family. It's in your name we pray. Amen. God. 
God sent his son. They call him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives because he lives. I can fail. Because he lives, and then one day I'll cross the river, I'll find life's final war with faith, and then as death gives way to victory. Well, good morning again, and happy Easter. We're here to celebrate Jesus Christ, and he's risen today, and I'm so glad that you're with us. I'm so thankful for our tech team, thankful for our, for our praise team, uh, thankful for our worship and discipleship pastor, Aaron Kanagi. Unfortunately, couldn't be with us today. He's not feeling well, so pray that he gets better soon uh, and that his family stays well, and I'm so thankful uh, for everybody, for all that you've done uh, to help make each and every worship experience online special. This morning, I want to uh, preach from Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24 there, uh, the resurrection account, one of the resurrections accounts of Jesus Christ. And I want to share with you today some good news. Now, I know that hearing only bad news can be a beatdown. And we need good news. And that's why I'm thankful that, uh, that recently John Krasinski gave us two episodes on YouTube that he called Some Good News. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's entertaining, it's fun, and it's Jim. You know, Jim and Pam from the office. And so uh, it's great, it's wonderful. But he shared some good news, and he felt like that the world needed to hear some good news. And I believe that the world needs to hear some good news today. Because hearing negative news over and over and over again wears us down. Yes, we need to be informed. We need to know what's happening in our, in our city, in our, our community, uh, in our world. But we also need to attempt to let the good outweigh the bad. And honestly, I've pulled way back uh, in the amount of news that I watch, the amount of news that I listen to, the amount of news that I read. And, and, and what that does for me is, if I'm honest, it kind of puts me a little more out of touch. I feel a little bit more uh, out of touch at times but also find myself happier, also find myself uh, with more joy and, and with less burden because uh, my life and the life of those around me is difficult enough and, and heavy enough at times that, that I, I don't need all that extra negativity in, in my life and extra weight. And we've heard so much negative, so much discouraging things about this pandemic and, and COVID and the number of deaths and the risks and the things, but I wish we could hear more about the stories of people who are recovering and the testimonies of how God has healed and how God has delivered them and helped them through this time and experienced victory over this disease. 
But with all the gloom and doom experts abounding in our world, we need some good news. And today, we're not focused on bad news. We're focused on good news. It's Easter Sunday. We celebrate that Jesus Christ is alive and that He's risen. And do we celebrate that every day? Yes, we do. But we put a special emphasis on it today on Easter Sunday. And and I've been reminded this week, Easter's not about a room that's full. It's about a tomb that's empty. And even in the unique circumstances of today, uh, I'm reminded that Easter's not about an empty room. It's still about the empty tomb. Easter's not about what we can do for God or how we can earn God's favor or what we can do to please Him and to make Him happy. It's about what Jesus Christ has already done for us. Easter's not about Easter eggs and family lunch uh, or the Easter bunny and, uh, you know, uh, attending some fancy brunch or whatever it is we do on Easter. It's about a crucified and risen Savior, Jesus Christ. And that is good news. We need to celebrate that Jesus Christ is alive, that He conquered death, He defeated death. He rose from the grave, and his resurrection changes everything. I want us to explore the Easter story over 2,000 years ago as Luke tells it in the Gospel of Luke, Luke chapter 24. Now we have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, as you hear me say often, the four Gospels, uh, the four books of the Bible that give the personal uh, account uh, and perspective of the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. And each one's a little bit different. We get different details Uh, from them, and it's interesting to read them. So if you want something fun and neat and meaningful to do today, go read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and and read the resurrection accounts, and kind of put them all together in your heart and mind, and see all the dynamics that were in play uh, on this day over 2,000 years ago. But I want to read Luke chapter 24, beginning in verse 1. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came to the tomb, bringing the spices they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. They went in but did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men stood by them in dazzling clothes. So the women were terrified and bowed down to the ground. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? Asked the men. He's not here, for he's risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee? saying it's necessary that the Son of Man be betrayed into the hands of sinful men, to be crucified, and to rise on the third day. And he remembered his words, and they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they reported all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them were telling the apostles these things. That's Easter. That's the story of God's people, God's followers experiencing the power of Christ and the power of the resurrection. Now, this is one of many accounts that depicts the reality of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Easter is good news because Jesus really did rise from the dead. Easter is good news because Jesus really did change the history of the world through his resurrection. And God kept his word, as he always does, And he fulfilled the promise of giving Jesus Christ to us as a sacrifice for our sins. He resurrected him from the dead in order to display his power over life, over death, and over all of creation. God said it. God did it. The people believed it and experienced it, and it changed their lives forever. Now, this was God's plan from the beginning. And it's the finished work of Jesus that gives you hope today, that gives me hope today, that gives the church hope today. You see, we often put our hope in all the wrong places, in all the wrong people, in all the wrong things, in all the wrong circumstances. But hope in any context apart from the context of Jesus Christ isn't really hope. The cross was painful. The cross was agonizing. The cross was was brutal, and it was ugly but it was necessary for God to display his power of deliverance through the resurrection. 
Now, a man being resurrected from the dead is incredible. It's miraculous. We saw Jesus do it in Scripture. But the divine Son of God rising from the dead is completely different. A man being raised from the dead can, can wow us, can, can amaze us. But Jesus Christ, the Son of God rising from the dead, well, that, that does more than just wow us. It has the power and ability to change us, to change us forever. And so no matter what you're feeling, no matter what you're experiencing in your life, this is what I want you to hear today. This is the truth that I want to resonate in your heart and in my heart and in our heart today as we celebrate Easter, as we seek to live life in the midst of chaos, in the midst of uncertainty, and, and, and we, can, we can embrace this truth tomorrow and the next day and the next day. And here it is. This is what I want us to get. Here's some good news that I want to share with you today. Jesus is alive. And that changes everything about today. That changes everything about today. Changes everything about today. Changes everything about tomorrow. We just sang a moment ago, because he lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. But because he lives, we can face today. We can handle the challenges that come our way. The struggles that we're faced with. The difficulties, the uncertainties, the pains of life. We can, we can endure it. We can get through it because we have the power of Christ in us. Jesus Christ is alive. And because of that, it changes everything about today. I want to thank Art Rayner for posting this on Twitter every single day. Uh, and, and he's so encouraging and equipping churches and, and pastors and, and, and works at one of our seminaries. And he does a great job of, of leading God's people and serving the church. But this truth's been resonating in my heart. And, and as I see it pop up on my newsfeed time after time, Jesus is alive and that changes everything about today. And then I see it again, Jesus is alive and that changes everything about today. Jesus is alive, that changes everything about today. Today, I want to reinforce that truth in us. And the fact that Jesus is alive changes our perspective and it changes our purpose. The fact that Jesus is alive changes our perspective and it changes our purpose. Now, whether you're feeling good uh, or whether you're feeling bad, uh, maybe some of you are indifferent. Whether you're in the best season of your life, or you're in the midst of your deepest struggle. Whether you've got clarity in every aspect of your life, in your job, in your career, in your family, and, and in your relationships, or whether you feel like you're living in this just this wad of confusion, remembering that Jesus is alive can change your perspective and transform your purpose. And as we think about this story and we see all the ways that the, the resurrection of Jesus changed the landscape, we can see how it has the ability to do the same thing every day for us. I want us to see the power of God in this day, to see the before and the after of the resurrection. If you look at the, all four different accounts, you get so many different facts and tidbits. But I just I, I thought about a few ways that Jesus being alive that Easter Sunday morning changed the landscape for those who were there. You see, the tomb went from being occupied to being empty. The stone was sealing and protecting and guarding the tomb. The tomb went from being closed to being open. The tomb went from being guarded strictly with government orders by Roman soldiers to guard the tomb. So it went from being heavily guarded to free admission. The Roman government w went from, from confident to terrified. Satan went from laughing with seeming victory to defeat. The followers of Jesus went from despair to hope. The disciples went from fear and uncertainty to radical faith. And our eternity went from horrible to hallelujah. Because we were destined 
for hell, destined to be separated for God, from God forever in our sin and our mistakes and our selfishness and our lack of willing to surrender control of our lives to Jesus and yet maintain control ourselves. But because of our faith in Jesus Christ, because the tomb is empty, because Jesus is alive, it changes everything about today, but it changes everything about eternity. Notice how the women came to the tomb and notice how they left the tomb. They came with spices. They came to, to anoint the body of Jesus, to put on his body. They expected when they got to the tomb that it would be sealed and that Jesus' body would be inside. And then it says, as the situation unfolded, they were perplexed. And then the angels appear and they, they became terrified. But once the angels reminded them and once reality became true in their hearts that Jesus did what he said he would gonna, was going to do, that Jesus was right, that he truly was the Son of God, that he truly did conquer death and rise from the grave. Once they experienced the reality of the empty tomb and that Jesus was alive, their perspective completely changed. It changed everything about that day. It changed everything about every single day and every other day. He really was the Son of God. And what he promised really did come true. Now, the women came to the tomb with sadness and with grief. But they left the empty tomb filled with joy and amazement and excitement and hope. And I want to tell you today, you can bring whatever you've got with you. You, you, can, you can come to the tomb, you, you can come to Jesus, you can come to church, you can come to God, however you want to picture it, however you want to think about it. You can bring whatever you've got with you, your fear, your grief, your uncertainty. And once you experience the reality of the empty tomb, once you experience the power of the resurrected Jesus, you can leave it all there and walk away completely different, just as the women did on that Easter morning over 2,000 years ago. Now, I may be wrong. The Scripture doesn't specifically say it. But, but they left different than they came. They came with the spices. I'm pretty sure they left without the spices. I'm pretty sure they didn't need them anymore. They weren't worried about the spices. That was the last thing on their mind. Their perspective had changed. Their purpose had changed. They came to anoint the body. They went to share the good news of the risen body. When we encounter Jesus, when we experience Jesus, it changes everything. We can come to Jesus with whatever emotions we have, whatever experiences we've got or going through, whatever expectations we carry in our hearts and our minds. But once we encounter the reality of Jesus, the risen Jesus, the Jesus who conquered death because he loves you and he cares about you and he wants what's best for you, we get a whole new perspective on life. And this new perspective reminds us that nothing is more powerful than Jesus. No personal struggle, no pandemic, no persecution, no problem, no person this side of heaven can compare to the power of the risen Jesus Christ. There's nothing you're facing in this life. There's no one that you're going to encounter in this life. That's more powerful than the risen Jesus. And when you accept him by faith, and when you live as a believer of Jesus Christ and a follower of Jesus Christ, that power is in you. That power is in me. That power is in us. And that power is in our church. And it's limitless. It makes the impossible possible. And it changes our perspective. And it renews our purpose. Victory belongs to Jesus. And when we're surrendered our lives to him, when we're fully committed to him in faith, we can quit living in fear and start living by faith. We can live with joy and peace because of Jesus. Jesus is alive today, which means there's hope today. And I want to give you some hope today. I want to give you some hope. Because Jesus is alive, you can have hope that your loved one or friend can come to faith in Jesus Christ. Because Jesus is alive today, you can have hope that you can still experience fulfillment in your marriage, in your relationships. Because Jesus is alive today, there's hope 
that you can find clarity in your decisions. There's hope that, that, that you can uh, overcome the stronghold of sin, and that stronghold of sin in your life that's bearing you down, that's weighing you down, can be broken, and you can be set free from that stronghold of sin in your life. Because Jesus is alive, there's hope that, that your addictions and our addictions can be healed. There's hope for the bitterness to subside. There's hope that, that, gr uh, that grief will loosen its grip on our heart and on our soul. There's hope that our stress can subside. There's hope that our worry can wilt away. There's hope because Jesus is alive that the church can thrive like never before. So here's what I want you to do. When you wake up in the morning, I want you to remember that Jesus is alive. And let that truth set the tone for the day. When you're in the middle of a mess, I want you to remember, I want you to intentionally remember that Jesus is alive. And let Jesus lead you on the path to cleaning up that mess. When you face a sinful temptation, I want you to remember that Jesus is alive and let him empower you to stand firm and not give in. <clears throat> when you experience a tragedy, an uncertainty, remember that Jesus is alive and let that bring you comfort and hope today. Take whatever you need. Those are just a few examples. Take whatever you need on any given day, under any given circumstance, and, and I want you to stand in front of the mirror, and I want you to say out loud that Jesus is alive, and that changes everything about today. Say it over and over and over until your heart and your mind are convinced that Jesus really is alive, that Jesus really does have this that he's in control and he wants what's best for you and that he's working on your behalf if you will live in faith and you'll surrender yourself to him. If God can resurrect Jesus Christ from the dead, then he can bring you to a place of experiencing victory in whatever it is you're facing in your life. And this new perspective leads to a new purpose. And that new purpose is helping people find and follow Jesus. That's really what it's all about, right? That's what the Great Commission's about. That's what the mandate of believers and Christians are. Once we come to know Jesus and experiencing the life-changing power of Jesus and we're saved by his amazing grace, then our mission and our purpose is to help other people find Jesus and help other people follow Jesus. It's evangelism. It's discipleship. Two wings of the same plane. And this new perspective gives us a new purpose. Notice that the women came to the tomb. They came with what I would call probably some empty hope. But when they encountered the empty tomb, they left empowered to share the everlasting love of Jesus Christ. They went on to share the good news with others. They, they ran back home and they shared with the disciples and some of the disciples didn't believe them and they came and uh, tried to see the tomb for themselves and then some still didn't believe and then Jesus himself appeared to them in his resurrected bodily state and it was amazing, it was incredible. And it was these women, it was these followers that God used to change the world to, to, to revolution, revolutionize history. The church was created because of the resurrection. The church was established over 2,000 years ago because Jesus conquered death and was alive and that the tomb was empty. And these first believers, they were the church. And we as believers today, we are the church and for over 2,000 years, the resurrection power of Jesus has been changing lives through the church and through his people. And a new revolution began with the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I believe God wants to start a new revolution. I, he wants to continue the revolution of the church, but he wants to write some new chapters in the story of this revolution, in this new season of life that God's taking us through. Pay attention. Listen. Listen. Pray, seek the Lord, because, because I believe the church is going to be completely different on the other side of this. 
But Jesus is still going to be the same. The tomb's still going to be empty. And the power of Christ still has the potential to change our lives and change the lives of everyone else in this world. He transformed the approach of uh, people trying to, to access God, to, to know God, to have uh, a knowledge of God through religion, through rules, th- through rights and wrongs. He transformed the approach from trying to know God through religion to being gifted access to God through relationship. All because the tomb is empty. All because Jesus is alive. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, for you are saved by grace through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It's a gift from God. Not from works so that no man can boast. The religious leaders, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes of Jesus' day tried so hard to implement their religion, to implement their rules, to implement their laws. And they thought that they were righteous and they thought they were good and they thought they were closer to God and they thought they were better than everybody else. And when Jesus stepped out of that tomb and ripped it wide open, He changed history. It was no longer about a religion. It was all about a relationship. A relationship with the living God who conquered death and who can help you conquer anything in this life. Don't discount the power of the fact that Jesus Christ is alive and that changes everything about today. Jesus took care of the only deed needing to be done. Becoming the perfect sacrifice to satisfy God's wrath and to pay the penalty for your sin and for mine. Jesus made everything right between us and God so that all we have to do is put our faith in Him. All we have to do is to trust Him. 2 Corinthians 5, 21, He made the one, Jesus, who did not know sin to be sin for us. So that, why why did He do that? So that in Jesus, we might become the righteousness of, of God, that we might have a relationship with God, that we might for the first time ever be found acceptable to God because Jesus took our place and paid the price that we couldn't pay. The works, the good deeds, the laws and rules that we couldn't keep, Jesus took care of all of that through the cross and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And all he's asking us to do in return is to put our faith in him. The resurrection becomes a reality when you surrender your life to Jesus, when you give him control. So I want to encourage you this morning. Admit your failures to God. Admit your selfishness to God. Admit your desire of trying to control your life to God. And let him know, tell him, confess to him that you know you're not good enough on your own. That you could never earn God's favor. You could never earn God's acceptance. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Ask God to forgive you for your sins. Ask God to forgive you for your failures and your shortcomings and your selfishness and for everything that you've done wrong. And confess your faith in the crucified and resurrected Jesus Christ today. Surrender control of your life to him from this point forward. And say, Jesus, I give you everything. I I lay it all on the table. I, I came to you, I came to church, I, I came to this live stream today, and, and I'm going to leave everything there, and I'm going to surrender it all to you, and I'm going to go and I'm going to walk away, and I'm going to live in faith, and I'm going to help other people find Jesus, I'm going to help other people follow Jesus. The empty tomb gives us eternal hope. Jesus is alive, and when you surrender your heart to him, as I did many, many years ago, he comes alive in you and changes you forever. When Jesus Christ came into my life and I surrendered control to him, I was changed, and I've never been the same since. Easter reminds us that we deserve nothing, but that the resurrected Jesus is everything. Everything that we need to have an eternal relationship with God and everything we need to find satisfaction and fulfillment in this life. Put your faith in Jesus and live with confidence that the empty tomb has changed you, that the empty tomb is your power, that the empty tomb is your hope, and it will change your perspective and it will change your purpose. 
Jesus Christ is alive. And that changes everything about today. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for me. I want to pray for us. Heavenly Father, I am so grateful for the power and the truth of your word. It's not, it's not the power of man. It's not the wisdom of man. But it's truly the truth and the power of who you are and what you did miraculously on Easter through your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for giving him to us. Thank you for sacrificing your son on our behalf that we might have access to you that we might surrender control of our life to you, that we might confess our sins and experience your eternal forgiveness, and that we might find purpose and meaning and hope like we never have before. And God, I pray that if there's anybody watching, anybody listening, who doesn't have faith and confidence and assurance in knowing that they know Jesus Christ, that they'd surrender their heart to you today, that they would, they would call me, they would call someone, they would text someone, they'd make a comment on the live feed, they would do whatever, whatever it took to find someone to help lead them to faith in Jesus Christ today. And Father, those of us that have been changed by you, those of us that have experienced the power of your resurrection and placed our faith in you and are believers of Christ and followers of Christ, help us to walk away from this worship experience today, changed and empowered by the empty tomb by the risen Jesus, and with confidence in knowing that whatever we face, whatever we go through, whatever we experience in our life, Jesus is alive today. And that changes everything about today, about tomorrow, and about our eternity. God, thank you for the power of your word. Thank you for the power of your presence. Thank you for the opportunity to worship you and celebrate you today. Call us to make a decision for you, whatever that is today and to live in faith as best we can, surrendering our heart and life to you every moment of every day. For it's in the power of Christ, in the name of Jesus, that we pray. Amen. We're going to sing one more song. Our worship team is going to come and lead us, and so stay with us. Don't go anywhere. We encourage you to go to our website, southhillsbc.org backslash connect. Uh, if you want to uh, connect with us and fill out a connection card, if you want a prayer, there's a, a place to fill out a card for prayer. We want to connect with you. We want to know that you're here. We want to help you in any way that we can, whatever that might be. But I hope and pray that you'll live in the power and the reality that Jesus is alive and that changes everything about today. Let's sing and worship together. In the darkness we were waiting Without hope, without light Till from heaven you came running There was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt praise the father praise the son praise the the kingdom coming and to reconcile the loss to reveal the whole creation you did not despise the cross for even in your suffering you saw to the other side knowing this was our salvation Jesus for our sake you died Praise forever to the King.
the morning that you rose, all of heaven held its breath, till that stone was moved for good, for the Lamb had conquered death. And the dead rose from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe, for the souls of all who'd come to the Father are restored. And the church of Christ was born, then the Spirit lit the flame. Now this gospel truth of old shall not kneel, shall not faint. By his blood and in his name, in his freedom I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ, who has resurrected me. Thank you so much for worshiping with us this morning. Be sure to like this page, South Hills Baptist Church, so you can stay updated on everything that is happening. I would like to remind you about our weekly small groups via Zoom and what's happening with our student ministry and kids ministry, Wednesday night firefall, and weekly family devotionals, as well as kids activities online. I miss seeing each of you, especially students and families. I'm so thankful our student ministry leaders and I can stay connected with students through technology. We are working with local partners to provide outreach and ministry opportunities, and we'll keep you informed of how you can get involved. Don't forget to post your family pictures of worship this morning with the hashtag SHBCEastern. If you made a decision today, have a prayer request, or any questions or needs, we would love to hear from you. Please visit our website for more information. If you'll stay tuned for just a moment, our information will be up on the screen. Again, thank you so much for worshiping with us, and we pray you have a happy Easter. <laughs> 